Hey, what's up, folks, and welcome back today for another special interview. I am rejoined by this insane man because when he does projects, he wears all the hats. Literally, he puts the weight on the world on him and bringing together some of my favorite films this year. And this is no other than John Swab. How's it going, John? Once again, welcome back. Hey, man, thank you. And I got to say, uh, I don't wear all the hats, man. I share one big hat with my uh my partner in this jeremy rosen uh That's without right. him none of this happens uh he and i are partners best friends uh you know blood brothers at this point and yeah. uh we're big fans of big fucking gold belt media that's what we my are. man yeah. my man look folks i don't read the new film that we're going to be talking about tonight is in theaters on demand in digital november 5th now i got a chance to check this out a probably a few months ago and I just watched it again because I, I will I will tell you why I was very eager to be able to obtain the screener again but um still watching it today again I was just like wow this was fantastic um again you've easily become one of my favorites in the business um so I appreciate what you do I got a ton of questions but before we go any further it is very important right now that we give a rest in peace to Michael K Williams that is one of the greats um, I know you got to recently work with him, and I just wanted to to, to give you a, a moment to be able to talk about either, you know, memories, conversations, lessons you've had with him. We lost a good one, and um, I thought about you instantly when he passed, and um, I'm glad I got a chance to be able to talk to you about him. Yeah, man. You know, you're the first person uh, who's asked me in this uh, this little PR run we've had for Ida about that, and I haven't really talked a lot about it. Um, you know, I to be honest, uh, it, it's really, really upsetting. And it's, um, it's a hard thing to think about because, you know, I didn't, I don't, I don't want to pretend like I knew Michael, like we were best friends or anything like that, but we got to work together and, and, you know, it, he meant a lot to me before I got to work with him. Uh, yeah. I knew what he had been through. I knew his struggle with addiction, um, uh, before I worked with him. And then when I got to work with him, I really got to confide in him and he confided in me about his struggles and I got to confide in him about mine. And, uh, we formed a really cool bond and, and to, he was one of my heroes. Um, you know, the first time I went to rehab, the only thing I ever I had with me was the clothes I had on my back and a box set of the wire. And, and that was it. I mean, I had no money. I just had my box set of the wire that I carried everywhere with me because, that was like my favorite show of all time. And, yeah. uh, and so to, to get the opportunity to clean my life up and, and get to work with a man like that, um, was really special. And it, it left a big imprint on me cause he was a great person and, uh, and one of the most special talents we had. So, you know, I, I hadn't talked about it a lot and, uh, I talked about it with Jeremy quite a bit and it shook us both up, man. It was, it's really sad. And, and watching the movie, afterwards I, I you know it was on tv one night and i watched a little bit of it and it was um it was really hard to watch yeah um but you know he's uh you know he touched a lot of people and i think uh it's incredible that he got to live the life he did and have the effect on some it's it's amazing yeah. you know so uh rest in peace man and uh you'll be missed absolutely yeah. well said and i appreciate that so so much and uh folks body brokers fantastic film still available De definitely uh take a chance uh take take time out of your day to check that out oh man so um as i recollect myself um if there's one thing i know about you man um and something i really appreciate about you is that you do projects that are really passionate to you you tell stories you tell messages that are dear to you what brings you now to Ida Red? Uh, kind of the opposite reason to Body Brokers, man. Like Body Brokers was like, uh, you know, this heavy burden and social responsibility to all these people that had had that experience that I had and that were losing their lives. So, I mean, when I got done with that shit, I was like, man, I got to, <laughs> I got to, I got to like take a breather and do something fun, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. uh, so Jeremy and I, you know, we kind of, sit down after each movie and and you know we spend a lot of time together but after body brokers we were like what's next man like how, what are we gonna do now and uh you know we both kind of were ready to do something you know more in 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 line with the movies that inspired us to get into filmmaking you know these action thrillers and yeah. uh 
we both kind of got excited about, you know, this idea for Ida Red, and I sat down and wrote it, and uh, I was off to the races, man. So that's where it kind of came from. That's awesome. So essentially, to 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 kind of put that in layman's terms, yeah, body brokers is definitely, and I, I really appreciate uh, the the terminology saying the social responsibility, um, that message, and I, I mean, even if you looked at my review within the comments, people are just pouring out talk about how much it meant to them, how much it got them through things with that. So, you know, that was a fantastic film, uh, both from an entertainment standpoint of just a film and just from uh, how it has helped and changed society with it. Um, but yeah, essentially, this was a film that you used this film in order to kind of balance out your mental health a little bit here uh, because of how deep of a dive you had to go in with that. And that's 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 what's up. And I I love this film. This is my type of film. Um, this film did did make its world premiere at uh, Fantasia Fest 2021. When I first saw this, I said, OK, Frank, John, sign me up. And I was like, I whenever the window is availability for press and media to check it out. I'm going to make sure I stop my entire day to do so. Randomly enough, this film had the smallest review window. It only allowed you to watch it within two hours. The film was about an hour and 50 minutes. And to me, I was like, that's a very good sign about how good the film's going to be before I even get the chance to watch it. Uh, but the other big reaction to me is that, um, and this is no knock to anybody else, but uh, in... In film festivals, you see a lot of independent films that you, you can tell that are, you know, low budget and lobbying for distribution. I felt like this uh, this film wandered off into the wrong direction. It looked like a big budget project. It felt like a big budget project. So in all, when did this film get distribution? When did it get acquired? Or, or did this all, yeah, like, did this happen before the festival? Like, what's the timeline here upon getting it now with Saban Films? Yeah, so uh, that's a good question, and I agree. I think, um, you know, first of all, I think Jeremy and I, we never uh, try and fit a film into a box in order to, you know, hope it gets distribution. You know, I mean, um, not to keep going back to Body Brokers, but the ending of that movie uh, is not really the kind of ending you put on a movie if you want it to sell to somebody. Um, but it did and, and it got out there and it did, it's doing great. But in terms of Ida Red, you know, we set out to make this movie. We were excited about making it exactly the way we wanted to. And luckily, uh, Saban, you know, came on board before we shot it and so did Universal and they had the rest mm -hmm. of the world. So, uh, you know, it was the first time I had had that uh, experience where I didn't really have to worry about that. Um, we kind of knew where it was going um, in terms of, you know, we knew they were going to put it out and they were going to get behind it in a big way. Um, and then when we got into Locarno, which is one of the most, uh, you know, well-respected film festivals in the world, uh, kind of blew us away, man, because it was validating. It was really yeah. validating. And, uh, and we want, I mean, this is still a very indie movie, man. So the, the fact that, uh, you know, it's tricked people into thinking it's not is, uh, <laughs> is pretty cool and pretty cool. And that was our, our intent as well. Yes, sir. Tip your hat. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Um, what is your you and Frank Grillo's relationship? He's back uh, now for his second film with you. Um, and he's a, obviously I'm a, a huge fan of his. Uh, you two are a very dynamic duo. Uh, but yeah, what, what's your relationship with him? And why was he the guy for his uh, role here? You know, I, I wrote this role for Frank. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, I, I kind of told him about it as I was writing it and he got a real kick out of it. Uh, <laughs> and, and I didn't tell him everything. I just said, you're going to have a lot of fun <laughs> with this man. And, um, and I, I, Jeremy and I, we, we, we're really good friends with Frank now. And, um, and that's, that's a rarity in the movie yeah. business where, you know, a lot of people, they come, they show up, they work, and then you don't really hear from them again. But yeah. You know, Frank, uh, we, we've spent a lot of time together, had a lot of meals, um, and uh, and I have a real big respect for him. And he's he's my favorite kind of actor because he's kind of this actor of the past. You know, he has this Charles Bronson look and flavor to him and presence, yeah. but he also really has chops. And not that Charles Bronson didn't, but Frank <laughs> got range. And, uh, and so I, I love working with him and, uh, you know, 
we might be working together again very soon. So I'm excited <laughs> to, to get I'll, into that. I'll take it a thousand times, sir. Yeah, man, it's going to be fun. Yeah. And not to mention, I mean, the cast is star studded up and down. Josh, Frank, Melissa, Sophia, William, Deborah. I mean, dude. So, again, tell me how this is an independent film. <laughs> Look at this. Look at the cast. Look at the production. It, it 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 doesn't reek it at all. And I do understand, but like honestly, now come on. Uh it's it is, man. I mean, it's it's uh it's it it wasn't that much bigger of a production than Body Brokers, and that was a very small film, too. So I mean, you know, really Jeremy and I pride ourselves in being able to do a lot with very little, and and hopefully we won't have to do that for very long. <laughs> 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 because uh it's it's tough man uh but but you know really it comes down to our relationships with people and uh and people you know we treat people right and and they come back you know I, i've worked with melissa twice now and frank twice and uh boone who's in the movie it was my third time working with and Forsyth twice and a lot of the bit players have been you know uh repeat repeat offenders so you know, we, uh, we treat people right. And because of that, they come back and they come back, you know, for a discount because they, they appreciate what we're doing. And then, uh, the locations, you know, I'm from where we shot this and, uh, I wrote every location into the script. Um, so I knew where we were going to shoot it and I had plenty of time to go and scout it and look at it and know what we were going to do before we got there. So we didn't waste a lot of time. So you are the man, you are the man. Well, look, I'm not going to hold you up too much longer, but I have to talk about the big elephant in the room here in this film, and that's straight to the ending here. You you got to you got to weigh about endings with films. Why the cliffhanger in this one? Before you even answer that, too, to my own satisfaction, do you plan on doing something else with these characters? Man, I would love to do something else with these characters, and uh, and you know, I think. In most of my movies, um, I'm trying to think of one where there isn't an ending like this or similar to this, uh, which I don't think there is. But, um, you know, I'm fascinated by, you know, I like movies that don't end, you know, where, you know, the, the, the screen may go black and the credits may roll. But in your head, like those characters are still living on. And, yes. uh, you know, I, I love movies like that. And that's the magic of cinema to me is that. It, it, when in, when movies end like that, it, it allows your brain to to keep it alive longer because there's no finality to it. And uh, you know, in terms of of Darla and her story and uh, and it going on and and with Wyatt, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if, if that'll happen, but um, but I think it'd be a fun movie if it did. I absolutely agree. I agree. Well, yeah, that's what I got for today. I'm excited for folks to check this film out. Again, you you just can't miss. And um, I, oh, obviously, I, I guess I should open up the floor to future projects that are coming down the pipeline that you may be able to, to discuss at the moment. Yeah, man, I just finished. Um, I finished a movie called uh, Candyland in May. Uh, we shot it in May. We finished it about a month ago. Finished post, and it's a it's a slasher horror movie. I don't know if that's up your alley. It looks like it is based on the stuff you got on that. Uh, sir, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> uh, well, let me tell you, man, uh, you've never seen anything as fucking graphic as this. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, nudity, blood, bunch of weird shit. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot of fun. Um, so I can't wait to talk to you after that. And then we're on prep on a new one now. Um with some familiar faces and uh and and it's a fun action movie uh that i think you're gonna enjoy as well man so i'm looking forward to to at least two more conversations with you, man coming up all day every day the seat is open for you here all day well folks time for you to get to work ida red in theaters on demand and digital november 5th now it is on demand and digital as i stated this is a must-see in theaters the sound the cinematography the action the performances you need the big screen, you need the big format, you need the big speakers to truly get the appreciation of this film. Trust me. Trust me, folks. John, get some sleep, man, because no, you got more projects to get to. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, buddy. And looking forward to talking again, man. No doubt, no doubt. Everybody, thank you so much for tuning in for this interview, and we'll see you around very soon. Peace.